So faith is a choice, just like we talked a little bit about a light switch, on and off, right? So electricity is constantly flowing, right? So you don't have to worry about what will happen. So when you turn on the switch, you don't have to worry about, since we're here in, in Portland, uh, our power comes, most of it, from Bonneville Dam. You don't have to worry about calling up the dude up at the Bonneville Dam and said, all right, dude, I'm going to be turning on this light here in five minutes. Can you get that thing going for me? Right? That's not how it works. It's flowing. It's doing its job. Electricity is flowing. And it's sitting at the switch. And the second you flip that switch, the light comes on. You don't have to worry about what happens before that. So same thing with faith. Jesus already provided all the faith that we can possibly need. We got the full package because we got Jesus in his fullness, so we have all the faith that we can ever need. All we need to do is believe, just like we believe that when we're going to turn on that switch, light's going to come on. We're supposed to believe that when we lay our hands on somebody, God's power is already flowing, and then as we lay our hands, his life is flowing through us and doing its job. The same way. So what we train ourselves when we minister to people, um, and it takes time to develop that, is that every time I come into contact with the person, something's happening. The switch is turned on. My contact, because Jesus said, lay hands. Lay hands is the switch. When I lay hands, I mean, it's one of the switches. There's other methods, and we'll talk about that when we're going to go through um, different methods of praying for healing. But laying hands is one of the ways of praying for healing, right? And so when I lay my hands, I don't have to worry about God turning on, ramping up the engine somewhere and to get the faith you know, engine going or to get his power source going. Why? Because it's, it's always flowing. Like God's power is constantly at work. Holy Spirit never sleeps. Remember, we're only the ones that sleep. Why? Because our bodies need rest. But in the spiritual realm, Spiritual realm does not sleep. There is no sleep in spiritual realm. It's always going. That's why even when we sleep, devil's doing his job, God's doing his job. But as far as we're concerned, all we have to do is just turn on that switch. And his power is already at our fingertips, ready to flow. But we have to believe that. And how do we believe that? We, that's what it says in his word. Jesus said believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So our job is to come up and lay our hands on the person and they will recover. And not worry about anything else, not worry about what's happening. Don't worry about the part that we're not responsible for. We are not responsible, just like for electricity, we're not responsible what happens with electricity and how it gets to our switch. We're not responsible for his power and how it works and what it all does. Now, it's fun to figure it out, and you can go through certain scriptures and figure that out how it works. But as far as we're concerned, our job is to strip things down and make it as simple as possible. And so if you're taking notes, write this down. I lay hands, sick recover. That's it. It's supposed to be that simple. Because here's what the devil wants us to do. When we lay our hands, immediately he starts giving us thoughts. What if you didn't do it correctly? What if you kicked your dog in the morning? What if you're not ready? What if your faith is not big enough? What if, it's, uh, what if that person is in sin? Does this person deserve it? The way he looks, for sure he doesn't deserve it. How dare he wore those kind of pants or you know, that kind of a shirt? And so all of these things are flowing through our mind. And so the enemy is trying to get us to get away from the basics, and that is, I lay hands, sick recover. And so the more that we can strip away all those lies, and it's a process, you work that through, you develop that to where when you start laying your hands on people, that's going to happen. That's normal. You're going to have all those things. You're just going to say, nope, devil, you're a liar. Jesus said, I lay hands, sick recover. Just one scripture. That's all you need at that point when you're ministering to people. And you, as you practice, you develop that to where when you lay your hands, things are happening. That's all you have to worry about. 
And that's how we pray for people, is just lay hands, they recover, and that's all. As far as being a person who's obedient to the Word of God and doing their job and allowing God's power to flow through. Amen? It's pretty simple, right? I mean, Jesus did not make anything complicated. And we see, um, especially people that don't know much about Christianity, like people that are, like when we go to places where people don't know much about God, don't know much about religion and all the excuses, for them, this stuff works really easy. Because we tell them, this is how it works, and they say, okay, they do it, and they start getting results. Why? Because they don't have all of these developed excuses and lies and all of these uh, traditions of men that we talked about yesterday that will not allow it to happen. We have to understand that God wants it to happen. And because He wants it to happen, if we do our part, it will happen. So God is a spirit, and so in order for His power to be manifested on this earth, He needs our bodies. He needs our bodies for His spirit to be manifested because He's a spirit. That's why Jesus had to come here, train out the disciples, make disciples, and then when Jesus was leaving, He said, make disciples. And so disciple is somebody who continues to do the same thing of his disciple, right? So Jesus taught the 12, then the 70, and then they taught, they continue to teach. And so here we are today, just continuing that cycle of what God commanded is to make disciples. We learn and we train somebody else to do the same thing. And what are we training people to do? To be like Jesus, do everything that Jesus did and to strip away all the lies and all the excuses why it won't work. Because there's only one answer that it's supposed to work and a million answers why it's not going to work. And the answer why it's going to work is because we have faith in God. We have faith in what He said. We have faith in this Word. That, that's why it works. The only reason that works is not because of how good we are or how bad we are or how bad the person we're praying for or uh, whatever other reason. There's only one reason why it works is because God said in His Word, He put His Word above His name, and because of that, that's why it works. And that's all we have to know. If somebody tells you, like, hey, please explain to me how healing works, a short version of it is this. God said, I believe, I do. And it works. That's it. It's that simple. And that's how we have to start thinking, eliminate all the other mind games. Because the things that happen in our heads, um, boy, it's, it's a jungle in there sometimes if you don't clean up that head. And all of our problems are there. They're between our years. There is no issue of God. There is no issue of quality of His uh, power. Uh, God is really good at what He does. He is the best at what He does. And so the enemy's job is to create a mess in our heads, create traditions of men, come up with excuses to get us to stop doing it. Because he knows that if we do, it will work. And so he will do everything he can to stop us from doing it. And when we start doing it, the next secret is to keep on doing it, don't stop. Because we've seen a lot of people, they start, and then they don't see it working right away, and then they stop. And then that doesn't do anybody good either. So we have to start and keep doing. Persevere and persevere and persevere. Like, never stop. I decided for myself that it is more important for me to be obedient to this word than about the results. So even if I had to pray for healing, lay hands for the rest of my life and nobody got healed, it is more important to be obedient to this word. Because that's what God's going to ask you. He's, gonna not, he's not going to say like, hey, how are your results? He's not going to be judging you based on your results. He's going to be judging you based on, did you do my word? Did, were you obedient to my word? And so obedience is very important. And so we just need to make it simple. Be obedient. Lay hands on the sick. Let's turn on the switch. And they recover. That's it. That's all we have to worry about. And so if we can strip it down to that version, our results will skyrocket through the roof. 
I mean, it's, it's, that, it's that simple. And Jesus wanted it simple. 